Yo, what's going on, family? This is O from Body by O, Body by o, Tactical Aquafina Academy and Aquafina Community Security. And we back with another episode of 2A and everything else. Will it be the topic? Will it be the guest? Either way, we're going to bust your head with all this hot knowledge, baby. Listen, we ain't trying to preach it to you. We're trying to reach it to you. Let's go. Yo, we're back, and I already told you how we getting down tonight. We got the amazing the tactical social worker. She in the building. The finest woman on the planet to me. It is what it is, and you know why. Hey, I can't help myself. So tonight, introduce the song, present to others, bow down and worship to the rest of y'all. The queen herself, <laughs> <laughs> tactical social worker. How you doing, queen? What you got going tonight? I'm good, babe. How you doing today? Man, I'm I mean shit. I'm married to you. How bad can it be? You know what I'm talking Look, about? Quick, quick sideboard. Tell the tell the people what my name is. Cause everybody always say queen, queen, queen. So let the let the people know my name is Tasha. I need you to say it too, sir. Look at y'all. I'll be calling the queen so much, I'll be forgetting what her name is. Like, wait, Stop wait. playing with me. For real, look, fam. My name is Tasha. I am very much okay with y'all calling me. <laughs> look, Tasha, with okay. capital T. No, please don't. Please don't. So that's why we. Name. That's why we just gonna say Tasha because we know they're not gonna capitalize that T in their mind. So T A S H A. So yes, my name is indeed. Tasha. I'm so okay with y'all calling me that. Yeah. It's Thank Tasha. you, sir. Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> so tonight, episode one of Two A and everything else. I'm sure you see the new setup. I've been getting all kind of inboxes and comments. Your camera sucks. Your audio sucks. Your lighting sucks. <laughs> Not no more. Ha! I done upgraded on y'all. Well, you know what? You know, I'll be honest. I appreciate y'all for your input, sending me the links and everything I need to get to get that to the next level, man. Look, yeah, so we going in. Get from you. You, you, you know, you know, you know, my people try to take care of me. Y'all a little rude with it, but I appreciate you. You take care of me. So Ooh, no, tonight, with the way you be talking to folks, what? No, I'm the nicest yeah. ever. All right. So tonight we're gonna talk about constitutional care. Everybody knows. I think the country just waiting on Texas just to see what we're gonna do. September first, <laughs> the constitutional care. Everybody gonna be John Wayne, Dirty Harry. You know what I'm saying? You know how we get down down here. But tonight's dialogue between body by old tactical and the tactical social worker is going to be about the constitutional security from a basic level all right so what is constitutional carry how does it affect the general populace specifically we got the queen on board tonight because we are going to talk about how that is going to affect our queens and community and uh we're gonna roll it out so the basics of constitutional carry we are literally talking about hey if you don't have your license to carry, so what? As long as you're 21 and not a felon. But I think the big question is, and I'm going to ask you, Queen, how do we know if they're actually 21 or how do we know if they're a felon? We don't know. Like, there's no way to know. And I doubt people are going to start randomly asking people like, hey, yo, are you of age? Like, you got any felonies? You did any Pay it time, prison time. So, yeah, it's it's not reasonable. <laughs> so basically, what you're saying. So we're not gonna know if they're 21, if they're a felon, if they have anything violent on their background until after the shooting. I mean, even then, we won't know that. Like, let's say somebody gets into a shooting mm -hmm. with somebody who may only be 18, 19, carrying a pistol out. We won't know that unless I don't know. We got some inside link. Mm. that's sharing information because at the same time like how much information is really shared when you're going through the legal process of a situation like that wow so you may or may not find out wow so do you think that not having to have the pocket card in hand is an incentive or more so of an incentive for individuals to push the envelope you know and not you know, adhere to the rules, even though the rules are supposed to be a little bit more law, I'm sorry, are supposed to be a little bit more stringent now that we have the constitutional carry. 
I think there's two sides to that. For example, I got a phone call, well, first an inbox, then an email, <laughs> then a phone call um, from a lady that just moved from Chicago. Like okay. we all know Illinois, they gun laws just ill. So she's new to Texas and right. she's like, hey, you know, I've been wanting to take y'all license to carry course. I just got settled in my house, you know, about a couple of weeks ago, but this constitutional carry, like, what do I need to do? You know, and of course her call and she wanted me to be honest with her. It's an older lady. She said she, she kept calling herself old, but she's older. She's in her fifties. Um, and I was telling her like, Hey, you know, September 1st, the only thing, the main thing that's changing is like, Hey, you don't need your license to carry card to actually carry a gun around in public. However, if you get caught up in some stuff or you break a sign or any type of gun law that you would have learned about in your license to carry course, you're still going to be held accountable because there was negligence on your part to not understand the law, to know what you can and cannot do while okay. you just out pistol toting Paul or pistol toting Patty. Okay, so we understand what the Constitution says about us, you know, having the right uh, to bear arms. Mm -hmm. However, there are laws in place. Why is it, or do you think, I won't say why is it, because that gives the impression that it actually is. Why do you think <laughs> people are so apt to do the Constitution carry in lieu of not actually knowing the laws thereof? I think that's, that's two part. Um, mm -hmm. they, because, yeah, we have the right to bear arms. Right. which means you have a right to own a gun. Mm. Like you keep it at home. Like that's your right. That's your house. Okay. You keep it in your car. That's okay. your right. That's yours. Domicile. You keep it in your place okay. of business. Okay. That is yours. However, okay. the public area, as much as we may not like it, they don't belong to, they belong to the goddamn government. Like it's not ours. Mm. So I honestly feel like people confuse the right to bear arms with the whole license to carry portion. So we're looking at it like that. Um, I really feel like the constitutional carry gives people an opportunity to not follow direction, just a reason to not do what there's mm. what they were supposed to do in the first place. Because at this point, if you don't have your license to carry, then I feel like people are being negligent. Like, why have you not taken the class? Why have you not tried to learn at least learn about the gun laws if you're not yet ready to get a gun well, but now well, september 1st well 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 if it's if it's in the constitution for me to have a firearm why would i have to give the government 40 dollars and then pay this instructor um some money to teach me what's actually a right first of mm -hmm. all you can tell your people they don't have to do nothing so remember that when when shtf and now you're looking crazy with the woulda coulda shoulda and it's too late for all that. So you don't okay. have to do You know what? I'm anything. glad you said that. I'm glad you said that. You said S-H-T-F. Okay. When it hits the fan, a I mean, lot of people think that. You've about cussing, so I'd be trying not to cuss too much. You know, it, it's really my dad who be like, listen to my podcast, but like, you, you just cuss too much. I, I, I turn it off. I turn it off. So I'm he like, be fussing okay. at you, not me. So I'm going to try to stop cussing <laughs> like my mom for my dad. Isn't that crazy? All right. So... <laughs> SHTF. A lot of people think that when it hits the fan, it's going to be like a World War III Civil War situation. No, <laughs> SHTF can literally be when that cop walks up on you and you got a gun in a place that you're not supposed to have a gun because you've never been to anybody's class or the little bit that you looked up online, you didn't, you know, read all of it thoroughly and you walk past this 51% sign and you get hemmed up. Babe, or not even something that extreme. Like, <clears throat> if you think about it, like happy hour, Dallas, let's just stick with our area that we're in. DFW is known for brunch and happy hour. Something as simple as you going out to a bar or any other spot, because most of the restaurants out here that have happy hour, over 50% of their <laughs> sales come from alcohol. So there's going to be a 51% sign. You have a server, a manager, the general manager, the owner tell you, hey, you have to leave. And let's say they decide to be an ass and don't want to tell you why they making you leave. And now you're refusing to leave. And now you don't, know, you don't know 30 out six and 30 out seven. 
Or what's the 30 out of 5? Oh, 30 out of 5 and 51%. Got it. Okay. We be, trying, right. to, we be trying to tell them. I, I, I need them to listen. Well, and here's the deal. Here's the, here, here's the, the catch to all of it. The laws or punishment for breaking the laws have gotten a lot more stringent due to the constitutional carry now. So you out there willy nilly, as they say, and you mess up something that you would have easily known had you had your license to carry, but because you don't have your license to carry, the penalty is that much greater. And that depends on what you do. So for those of you who are wondering, well, I don't have to get my constitution. I mean, I'm sorry. I don't have to get my license carried. You don't. However, but if you do, there's kind of, I don't really, I don't want to say buffer. I will say there is kind of like a different scale of punishment uh, if you do have your license carried. So it's always safer to get it, I believe. Um, you have to have it no it, it's the loss constitution mm-hmm. carry i it do your feel decision. yeah it's your decision but it's always better to learn go to class learn that thing whatever it is you, you never want to go based on your own intellect and intelligence you always want uh, uh an educated opinion by a scholar of such or instructor certified instructor of such yeah yep all right so how do you think tactical social work, and I'm going to let you do your thing right here. How do you think constitutional carry as a whole is going to affect the queens, known and unknown? You know what? I'm really doing my best to sit here and not do this and be like, dang, you fine. Sorry. Excuse me. Being bag memories, huh? (laughs) Yes, (laughs) indeed. All right, let's focus. Shake back. All right. <laughs> so, constitutional carry and my sisters. Um, I don't know. That's so freaking layered because you may have women who just think they gonna throw pistols in their purses and mm-hmm. just just be good, just like that. You know, mm-hmm. I don't know. Maybe they bought a gun and they didn't get around to come into class or they. T- they, I don't know, thought it was a one and done. And now you just out here just, just ignorant, might as well say, because you don't know what you don't know until somebody show you you don't know. And even then, you have to be receptive that you don't know. Um, <laughs> so I, I honestly worry about situations like that. Mm-hmm. I worry about situations where women who let's say they may have trained a little bit, but because of the constitutional carry, they just, you know, because we lollygag, we lose, they lose their LTC 100s and they haven't found the, found the per- paperwork or whatever, but now they're out in public with this firearm and yeah, rightfully so now, but you lack the training to be able to effectively defend yourself against another guy or possible woman, because women be cutting up too nowadays. Uh, <laughs> you know, that have a weapon. Now, here you are in a situation where you meet and force with force, and now the tables are turned because you don't have the training, whereas this person might be a career criminal. Like, they do this. Like, this is what they do for a living, whereas they got skills. you never... Yeah, they got skills in that, in criminology. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so it's just, it's so many different areas that I worry about and I feel like this the constitutional care is just another reason for us as a community to skip steps and just not do what we're supposed to and then when SHTF you know they're gonna be looking around for somebody to help them out I'm sorry go ahead you see me I can't help it babe I'm I'm looking I'm looking at you (laughs) so though it just like situations like that like the safety on all levels and and the 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 full arrogance or confidence because people are carrying firearms like sisters and brothers alike it's just i don't know so it sounds <laughs> like know. it sounds like you're saying that since the constitutional carry is about to hit a lot more people are going to have these firearms mm-hmm. all over the place yeah with that it sounds like there would be a need for a higher skill set across the board. 
So you're going to have to train that much more because the chances of that contingency or the percentile, you more likely to get, in, get into that contingency now that constitution of carry is on board more so than you would prior to. Now, I think my, my big issue with the constitution of carry and everybody having a firearm and training not being mandatory, I get it. I get it 100%. Um, and I say that because I, 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 I love training. Um, I think everybody should get training, but that's me and my thought process. And we can't impose that on anyone else. I love going to get information. I love learning. Yeah. However, the more people you allow to do a thing without having to learn said thing, the more dangerous it becomes. Okay. I agree. With that perfect example, we teach post contingency directives. We, we teach, you know, protocols, post engagement. So you have to dispatch your firearm. Several people in the vicinity hear that shot go off and they haven't been to anyone's courses, whether it be lecture or practicum on the range and everybody wants to pull their gun out and be the hero for the day because they weren't taught de-escalation. They weren't taught situational awareness. They weren't taught to scan and assess the situation. And now we got this big old shootout. Everybody shooting at everybody because everybody got a gun and no training. Everybody going to jail or to the hospital one. Or to the grave. Yeah. And I think that is, is, is a big, 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 big struggle for me. However, my remedy to said increase in the percentile chances, chance percentile if I'm saying it right, the increase in the chances of me having to defend myself makes me want to train more. More so than just walk out there and just, yeah, I got a gun. I don't, I don't need to Side, training. side, side more, train. sir. Cyborg, you're speaking from a place of privilege because of information. First of all, don't be doing it because of, we know information within itself is privileged. Wow. To to have access to certain information, to be able wow. to understand certain things. Because Look. it sounds like you're saying, it sounds like you're saying that that single parent mom who can't afford the license to carry course, that can't afford the application fee, that can't afford the fingerprint, that has a gun given to her by a family member, should be allowed to defend herself with said gun that can't afford. Yes, it. yes. So here's where I was going with that. Two edged sword. You, mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. So when you make the comment, and that mindset, and of course, you being the husband, that mindset, you know, I picked up on that as well. So understanding the severity, like in totality of what, what may or may not happen September 1st, we know, and our clients who train regularly understand that like, hey, like ain't no time to BS. Like we're gonna train more, like we got to tweak stuff in situational awareness, like leaving the house, um, coming back home, getting in the car, getting out the car, you know, things like that. And we understand that because training is life. That's what we do. But when you have someone who innately, they genuinely just want to defend themselves, they don't know or they don't understand what they're getting themselves into. So wow. stuff like that, I'm just like, I, I just wish... <laughs> I don't, I don't know. We can't make people get it or can't make people like, hey, I got something over here. Like this is like, this is something you need. And I, I think it boils down to just priorities, like regardless of the price on things. Now, granted, some people truly cannot afford training, can't afford a firearm. However, on the flip side of that, people, when it's something they see a value, they're going to find a way to get it like they will mm -hmm. so whether it's the source it's coming from or maybe they don't know that it's out there but it's just 
if they with don't understand said, yeah with that said there are a lot of firearms instructors like both of us um big shout out to i'm just just some drop some names um we got daryl at black roots nasiru the black roots um we got straight shooter andrew and shannon um yeah, so you got shannon yeah who who actually you know do discounts scholarships uh people donate classes you know what i'm saying so we have it set up in in in, in the circle of cadre i will be discussing that um in, in some coming episodes we have available often you know scholarships classes donated for the people to learn as much as possible uh, we we don't want to be out here willy-nilly and making it dangerous for ourselves and everyone else mm -mm. We, we don't want to do that because it's the skill to learn how to identify the good guy and the bad guy in a contingency Right. There are a lot of police officers who don't know that too well, which is why when they roll up on the scene, everybody getting shot up has got to go because they don't know, you know, and when time is of the essence and we don't have time to run said protocols per se, because we don't know um, theories and concepts of how to do that, things can get extremely, extremely dangerous for the general populace. Yeah. You're amazing. You know that? No, I do that. <laughs> all right ladies and gentlemen um that pretty much sums it up for tonight real quick to the point nothing too long and drawn out we want you to get training we encourage training it's like, Side, it's like sidebar, sidebar to that so something i'm learning and okay. you know the the social work in me okay there's holes here like why are why people not getting it so a lot of times when people hear training they just hear gun range. They don't hear mm -hmm. education. Like, so the education piece, even though training is education, because if you think about even in work terms, you go to a work-related training, it's a workshop, you're getting educated, but for whatever reason, the disconnect is there with firearms. So the whole safety component part of it, the whole land learning how to hold your gun. So I don't, I don't know why the mind in our minds, we skip the education, the basic, and just skip to just like gun stuff. So, well, since so you that, put it out there, since you put it out there, since you went on and done it, do me a favor. Education is a part of training. It is. Do me a favor. Tell the people who you are, how they can reach you, and tell them about the programs you got coming up. You got some programs coming up in the next couple of weekends that are absolutely amazing. Um, Go ahead and uh, drop it on them. We'll go ahead and move to that segment now because that that was that was huge, and a lot of people don't know that there are programs, seminars, so on and so forth, lectures all the way down to practicum, just like college when it comes down to defending yourself. Um, go ahead and drop it on them. Tell them who you are, where to reach you, what you got going on, what's coming down the pipeline. Give it to them. I don't know why I just start blushing the way you be hyping it up. Oh. <laughs> so, as he said, um, I am I am his bae, his forever bae. He's the husband. Um, my name is Tasha. So, Tasha or Latasha, I prefer Tasha. I am the founder and the visionary behind Tactical Social Worker PLLC. Um, I'm a social a licensed social worker in the state of Texas. Just make sure you put that out there. So. Um, I will have my LCSW next year for those who are looking to connect with me in a traditional therapeutic sense. Um, also, with being a firearm instructor and a social worker, I approach my firearm training, my clients, from a perspective of boundaries, self-care, and safe spaces. With that, we discuss things like boundaries, the different types of boundaries spaces the different type of spaces like how do we create them how do we acknowledge them how do we protect them what areas do we need to tighten up on like how do we implement those even down to prepping you for potential lashback from people when you have to enforce boundaries so with that um i have a workshop a training it used to be labeled queen's weekend so if you are on my social media and you heard people rave about that it's now called queen's back 
BAC, which stands for Boundaries and Cocktails. So I made some upgrades to the service where it's in a more like chill, relaxed setting. So we sit around, light refreshments, and we talk about boundaries and how pretty much how you got to the space of being here where you feel like you need a firearm. So within that space, we discuss ways to keep ourselves safe with and without a firearm, both personally and professionally. Um, also in Philly, I have a training that I'm doing with Ty of Surplus Arms um, called Queens Shoot Your Shot. That's September 25th. Um, going back to Queens back, back that's for the DFW area. You're more than welcome to travel to the DFW area if you're not here locally. I have one scheduled every month up until the end of the year. So September through December, you know, you can sign up as far in advance as you would like. Um, but that's pretty much that's pretty much it. Like everything I do comes from a mental health standpoint. It's all about getting your butt back home with either the same or less trauma that you left with, not getting into situations where you're adding to the trauma that you are already trying to clean up and heal from. You feel me? Nice, so. nice. You have, um, you, you might be holding a secret, but I'm going to throw that in. You have another miss. program coming up. Um, BAC, what is that? Yeah, Queen's Back. What, is, what does that mean? So boundaries and cocktails. What? So <laughs> why you gotta do that? I'm like when you do that. <laughs> so I'm guessing he wanted me to touch on it some more because he mentioned it again. Yeah. So previously oh, wait, wait, we wait. so so wait, wait, wait. Boundaries and cocktails. So it sounds like something the men can't come to. We can't we can't come see y'all. Yeah, because that's why I said it used to be called Queen's Weekend. Uh-huh. So Ain't no, ain't no, ain't no brothers in there. No, no, no. So um, wait, 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 wait. So, so boundaries. You, you gonna talk about the boundaries? Yes. So what? What are cocktails doing? What kind of cocktails we got? So here's why. So it used to be in a classroom setting. It was very formal, like okay. literally, like you was going to a CU workshop or something. Okay. And I was like, you know what? I need to switch this up, you know, a little bit because it 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 took us a good 30, 35 minutes to break the ice. And I was uh, like, okay, this this taking my sister too long to warm up. But I'm like, okay, if I give, you know, like life wine. Drink it, drink. Look, we, we're not going to be in there throwing shots back. <laughs> but some <laughs> light right. wine. You know, you got to get that disclaimer. because you know I need to I'm put a, that disclaimer out there. Because so. some of your people are signed up just because they think they're getting shots for the night. No. no. Well, you said shots. Right. No, not them kind of shots. No. No, but Queen's Back is a two-day. That's what I forgot. It's two days. So the first day we're in a relaxed setting, like we're chilling, we're sitting around talking. Orders? Um, you, you gonna have orders, finger foods and stuff? I'm still thinking about that. Still thinking about that. Okay. Okay. Um, but okay. of course we're sitting sitting around in like a relaxed, uh, informal setting, and we're of course chatting on why we're here, and then you know the conversation will flow from there. I'll be guiding the discussion as well. So that's day one. Okay. That'll be Saturday afternoon. Um, day two, we are at the range. So, of course, the re the adult refreshments are totally separate from the gun range. That's why it's on two separate days. Got you. Okay. So, so you got a date for that? Yes. The next date is September 11th and 12th. Okay. All right. September 11th and 12th, Queens in the DFW. Be there. Kings, send your queen to that. You already know you can't auntie, teach you cousin, to mom. Them. Send them, send them, send them. You know they don't listen to you, no way. So send the queens. <laughs> <laughs> send the queens to the queens, man. Um, that is awesome. Where can they reach you at? Um, they can reach me. Preferred method of contact is Instagram. That is tactical, T-A-C-T-I-C-A-L, social worker underscore. P L L C that's on Instagram. Um, email address is tactical social worker at gmail.com. Website is www <laughs> three W's www dot tactical social worker dot com. I'm following it up with my words. Leave me alone. <laughs> she got her own, she got her own website, y'all. She turned up. She turned up. Yeah. And um, I, done, I done grew up. I done grew up. You got you, you're doing an amazing job. Um thank you, babe certified firearms instructor in the uscca that is uh doing doing big things uh we yeah, definitely, licensed definitely, social worker for the state of texas social worker for the state of texas lmsw yes uh, killing the game Ooh, come on see 
<laughs> yeah, yes, yes, SCSW on the way. Um, definitely, definitely appreciate it. Definitely need it in the community. Um, ladies and gentlemen, that is the Tactical Social Worker. Make sure you like, comment, share, subscribe, follow. Make sure you get on her newsletter as well. If you're not on my newsletter, we are going to have that on my newsletter and on my website as well for you to jump on that. And uh, Tactical Social Worker, we appreciate you. And ladies and gentlemen, that is episode one, 2A, everything else. Man, we love y'all. Thank y'all for coming out. Once again, you know how we get down. We ain't trying to preach it to you. We're trying to reach it to you. We love y'all. We out. Bye, family. <laughs>